What's up, yo? It's Pixar time. We're doing Pixar movies. Yeah. So, uh, we haven't seen any like the 2022 ones, so we can't really rank them yet. I mean, we could do an update one later on if you guys really want to see it. Do you guys really want us to watch Lightyear? Like, really? They, they probably do. They some people really like that movie. I don't know why. Anyway, with anything else, let's get started. First up is... Oh, this one's going to be a tough topic. Okay, Liam and I might get into a fight here. Up is in favor for me. The first ten minutes make it better than most of these movies. But you got to remember, like, we're talking about the movie in general. Okay. Not just, not just like, the first, like, ten minutes. Okay, but isn't that why you rank Wally so high for the first 30 There's minutes? There's a difference between that. There's a difference between the first 30 minutes and first 10 minutes. There's a, I'll talk about it when we get to Wally, but I'll, but I'll just say. I think Up is, like, mid-awesome tier for mm. me. Because, like, well, well, you can make a defense for it if you want, Roman. Well, I just feel like... In a... All of, in the, like, grand scheme of things, that's some of the best content that, that Pixar has, like, ever done. And the first ten minutes are great, yeah. Yes. And so that's why I, I think that if I'm that if I'm going to put it anywhere, it's in, like, low favorite, because that's some of the best stuff that, that Pixar has, has ever done. All right. So. I'll go with high awesome, but, like, we also have to think about, like, the more the middle and end portions of the movie, because... Or your feelings on those. It's not bad, though, after that. It's not bad, but it just doesn't hit the same high. I think the movie starts off really high, and then it grounds you. And then, like, it gets a sort of, like, a uh, super high slope that, get, that gradually gets slower and lower and lower and lower and But lower. it never gets bad, though. It never gets, like, to, like, Cars 2 or Incredibles 2 levels of bad. It just kind of ends with, like, a pretty, like, decent area. Like, a... Like a middle ground, pretty decent. So I think awesome is like the best place to put it. Next up, onward. Onward is pretty decent. It's not, yeah. Low I mean, tier, pretty decent. It's literally like the. It's like there's nothing really to say much about it. Yeah, we haven't really seen like we watched it like once. That's it, right? It wasn't. That's the one that has Chris Pratt in it, right? Yes. It wasn't terrible. It was just kind of wasted potential for the ideas that the movie was proposing. Okay. Plus, uh. <laughs> Other things. We're we're gonna make people upset here. Incredibles two. Wait, that's incredible. That's Incredibles two. Right here, yeah. I only got the two mixed up. <laughs> um. Oh, Incredibles two. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Can I talk? Sure. So my feelings on Incredible Incredibles two come down to two things. One is it a good movie? Yeah. Kinda it is. Is it a good sequel? No. Hell no. <laughs> so I think that that's like the big thing I'm taking away from it. Is that like. If you're judging it off of, like, the first one, it just doesn't compare in the slightest. No. But if you're comparing it as, like, a standalone movie... It's not bad. It's not that bad. So I think bad tier is where how I feel. How about you, Roman? You can tell your piece. Okay, so... I like Elastigirl in this movie. Um, sh- I mean, she's basically the main character. Yeah. Um, that's, bad. That's, not, that's not a bad idea in the slightest. Uh, and I feel like... Liv and I have, like, talked about this off camera but there were there were there were better ways spoilers for the one person that hasn't seen this um there are there are better ways for them to make supers legal and the whole like screen slavers plan really to me doesn't make any sense i've like okay so the screen slaver i forget her like, actual name but her her plan is to work with her brother in order, working with her brother to actively make supers legal, and then sabotage a meeting to make them legal, to make supers unlegal again. Right. That, like, it's like a big detriment. But they were illegal in the first place. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I hear, like, everyone consider this idea where Screen Saver was, like, a, was, like, a prop, or, like, a villain made by the two uh, siblings mm-hmm. in order to get supers back and become legal. Right. Yeah. And exactly. then, and then, like, Lots Girl finds out, and then there's, like, a big moral dilemma behind it all. Like, right. Like, are supers really needed anymore? Well, that would have been something more interesting to, like, explore. And, mm-hmm. and you know, Pixar, in many ways, kind of invented the, you know, twist villain thing. Kind of. But, but they, but they, but they couldn't do it twice. They couldn't catch lightning twice. And we'll get into it more when we get to 
in Incredibles, but Syndrome just, just worked so much better because his goals were so much more simple. I feel like. I feel like they could have like been more nuanced with this movie, plus for as long... I think that on our big detriment to this movie came is the fact that like it took over, what, 14 years to come out? Yeah, well, it was... 13, right? It, it was cancelled at first, and then it was uncancelled, and then it was cancelled again. And then, oh, something else that I hate. I'm sorry, guys. I think it's because of my bias, because Liam and I played the game as a kid. But I wanted the Underminer so much more. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, they give us that tease, and then they don't even commit to it. I mean, granted... It would have been a super deep cut if they had, like, the robots from the, from the game actually show up in some ways, like, a reference. Right. But that would have been, like, the most amazing, like, deep cut ever. Right. Just because how stupid it would have been. Right. But, and, okay, the Rise of the Underminer game is a, is a really, really stupid game. And, I mean, it's like, we would probably, like, if we ever find a way to emulate it, I would definitely live stream with you, Roman. I would do it. I would definitely do it. a Let's Play of it. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, no, but, like, the Underminer is is, like, like he should have gotten more. Yeah, like, I don't think he's, like, worthy of being main villain material. No. But, yeah. But the ending was so epic of that first movie, and then you get ten minutes with him in the second. More like, more like six. Yeah. Like, the rest of it's other subplots, so I'm going to say bad. I'm putting it in bad. Low, low, bad. It barely edges out. Finding mm-hmm. Nemo. <laughs> oh, finding Nemo. Okay, see, I always thought that Nemo was, like, Low awesome tier. I always really liked the movie. But I like Dory. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. All right. I always really liked the movie, but like, hmm, hiccups. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like looking later on the list, it definitely doesn't deserve to be in like favorite tier because like it's you know, it's a good movie. It's a really good movie. It's just really really solid. That's all it really is. I mean, Dory's funny. The sharks are funny. I love the fact that like that movie retroactively made me made me realize that sharks aren't actually all that bad. It's the dolphins that are assholes. Fish are friends, not food. <laughs> no, but like, and then the you know the fish in the you know fish tank the tank gang are funny too. Yeah, like, but and I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like, I don't know. I feel like. Nemo could have been it could have been better and that for sure was not worth the 13 year wait Finding Dory yeah. which was the wait for that said movie so I'm going to put it in it's I, think, like, I think a little awesome low awesome? yeah the good, high, not, high pretty good high pretty good above onward <sighs> that we don't really need okay we could just tell it just one I could, can I say one sentence about it before we move on to Luga? sure the good dinosaur is a test project made by a 3D animator that has a that has really pretty visuals, except it also was made by a by a ten year old playing around with his dinosaur figurines. No, but like in all seriousness, why Pixar? It was a combination of really beautiful like scenic looks with <laughs> with a ten year old's first ever dinosaur. <laughs> and then there was Luca, which. I saw on my own, Liam. I don't know if you saw it I yet. I have not seen it yet. It's not that bad. I'd uh, say pretty decent. I'm going to put it into the pretty decent. i say put it above onward. Inside Out is thing. not bad either. It, it It's not perfect, but like... I'd say put it, put it like right next to Finding Nemo or like maybe a little above. Coco uh, is like not bad either. Coco. Coco is not... Coco. It's not like all that bad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, a little quick text. Uh, Coco's pretty good. Like, I would... Like, these movies I, like, I don't watch as often. Not because no. they're bad, but because, like... We, okay, for a little quick story. We grew up on, like... We grew up on Up, Finding Nemo, Incredibles, and... To- and all the Toy Story movies. Yeah. We so watched them constantly. <laughs> yeah, that... That was, like... We haven't... We don't have the love for, like, the newer p- Pixar movies. Some of these are great movies. I mean... Some like, of them are. Yeah, like, 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 honestly, like, if I was able to rewatch Inside Out, I would definitely have, like, a more stronger opinion on it. Right. Like, maybe it will be an awesome tier, but I really don't have much to say on okay. it. Okay. Honestly, Toy Story 2 is probably in the favorite tier. Yeah. That one's undebatable. I mean, do we need to... Do we... Do we need to say much? It's like... It... It might be, like, one of the best movies here. Yeah. Like, it's, um... It's just, a, like... 
Pixar doesn't do sequels well, but they they really nailed it here. And like, as you guys will see, there's not a bad Toy Story movie. Okay, Liam. Now, all right. Well, now, have a piece on Toy Story or now? Sure. Yeah. Toy Story Two is what we're yeah. Toy Story Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Toy Story Two is pretty good as a movie. Like, it's arguably like the best sequel anyone's ever made because it takes the original concept of Toy Story and expands it. I pretty much say like, if you're ever gonna write a sequel, watch Toy Story Two because it just tells you what you need to know how to write a good sequel. Expands on the ideas, explains the explains it a little bit more in detail goes with some new themes and has a lot more more I has a lot more cool uh, scenes like the toy like the toy barn the I think that or, like, the, uh, or, the, or the amazing opening sequence I think that like the toy barn scene is actually really cool and then one of the most iconic lines was when like Andy said five minutes Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we always say that whenever like we have like little to no time. <laughs> All right, so Liam, Wally, I made my case for up. You make your case for Wally. All right, so I think Wally is higher than up. Okay, hear me out here. Up has definitely like the best opening out of any of the Pixar movies. Like no one can debate that. Better than Toy Story two. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. Not, okay. not as whimsical, but better. Okay. Yes, but I think Wally. I think, firstly, the fact that the two main protagonists never speak, and never speak in a full sentence in the entire movie, and yet you still understand them perfectly in every single way possible, is amazing. And you also feel like you want them to end up yeah. to well, there. Really yeah. there but, but, like, and then it's not even more about romance, just really cute together. Yeah. And. Liam has said it, and it's true. Well, like, they were able to tell a story about like what happened to you know the humans and all of that stuff and everything that really happened without words. Without words, we just saw what happened. And as a kid, you don't really notice it, but then when you really look at it, you're like, oh shit, <laughs> capitalism took over. <laughs> so yeah. you're not. So you don't want to put it in favorite tier. I will put it high above awesome tier. I love the movie. I would definitely put a favorite tier, which is like my personal like feelings on every movie. But yeah, that's where I got put. So cars free. See, here's the thing. Here, here is the thing, Liam. Cars three is the best one, <laughs> which is which is like scary because if it's the best one, then I'm not gonna uh, lie. I like Cruise. I I really kind of do. I like think she's good. Yeah, and. There's something else that we can't say, but there's also another reason that we like her. Um, I mean, I've already said before in videos, but anyway, yeah. Um, so, but so, but Cruise is the only good good part of the movie. I don't think that's true. What else is there that's that's actually good? The um, the villain's kind of interesting. No, the villain, of. no, the villain sucks. <laughs> uh, Chick Hicks was in the movie. Oh yeah, that's so, right. So like, there's that for you. <laughs> Continuity in in a you know Cars movie. Yeah, I like the fact they don't even reference Cars two in the slightest. Well, they well the, I mean they cut Mater out of the movie for so. a good reason. <laughs> yeah, I think the movie's good, but I feel like it's more like a retirement movie rather than like a car sequel. Yeah, but we can get into this later. But I think it's above of car. I think it's above Cribbles too. What? Yeah, really. I genuinely would rather watch it than Incredibles 2 again. I think it's also because in Incredibles 2 we had more, like, attachment to the first one. Whereas, like, it's kind of, like, okay that, you know, Cars 3 really isn't all that bad. I want to know something. Mm. What would happen in the future where we did have Cars 2 as, like, the middle child of these, uh, Cars <laughs> movies? What would have happened? Uh, there would be world peace. Um... Oh, so the original Toy Story. wait, so there's just one more thing that like I want to say about Cars three, and then we can get into an actual great movie. Um, okay. I have another thing to say about Car Cars three too. How can Cars age? Yeah, well, that's actually what I was about to talk about. Like, so, <laughs> do they just get new? Could McQueen get new parts because he's an old car? Right. He can get new parts, but like maybe the whole thing was that he was trying to race on with with a, his with a, with his original build rather than switch to new stuff. Okay, but like that's like a good feast on that. Right, but then how did yeah, but how did Dot die? Did he like run out of fuel? Yeah, is he, that what happened to him? Did he get in a car accident? Did Mater kill him off screen to make cars too? <laughs> <laughs> no, but 
well, no, actually, because Lightning references that Doc is still alive in Cars 2. No, no, they say he's dead. What? Well, I can't believe they named, they named it in its honor, in his honor. Oh, right, so yeah. So he's dead by the end of, by the, end of uh, by the start of Cars 2. All right, now on to a great movie. All right. Toy Story 1, iconic movie. But here's the thing. I love the movie. I really do. But then we also take into consideration it was the first fully 3D animated movie. So, with that under the belt, I think the movie's like an awesome tier already. You got a friend in me? Yeah, you got a friend in me. That being said, uh, we can all know one thing. <laughs> Stupid snots. <laughs> Alright. We got to know one thing. Is that Andy is a Cyclops, is like literally a Cyclops monster with <laughs> two eyes. <laughs> um, Andy's like a... It's like the definition of like a psychopath. He's uncanny valley in that movie. <laughs> and, then, and no, wait, no. He okay. To be fair, to be fair on that, like that was a, like I feel like that movie gets a lot of ridicule for Andy's design, but like everything else still looks really good. And like on like a technical level, I think it was really smart for them to make a movie about toys when with the first 3D anime movie because that way, if anyone says it looks plastic, <laughs> that's the freaking point. <laughs> well, and then also, I'm not gonna lie. I like Sid, too. Like, like Sid's okay. Well, but I like how there's that, like, heartwarming... There's, like, there's that, like, heartwarming moment where, you know, towards the end, I think Woody's trying to start to, like, warm up to those toys, and he, like, helps to free them. Mm-hmm. In but, a way. Yeah. But I I do like how in, how in you know, Toy Story, Woody and... But, like, Woody learns to accept Buzz and to get over his, you know, like, you know, jealousy. Like, if you really, really think about it, in each of these movies, Woody learns something different. Yeah. And that's actually something that I, uh, like. But, it's not the best. I put it above Wally, honestly. Yeah. Um. I, no, 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 I think Wally's a little bit better. Yes. Uh-oh. Nope. Come on. Does Wally have any song as awesome as You Got a Friend in Me? The Fine Dancing. You win. A friend of me is great, but is in every single one of the movies, so we can't really count it just because of the song. That being said, can we all agree on one thing? Mm. <laughs> Why did all of uh, Andy's friends look exactly like him? <laughs> <laughs> that's you know what? I didn't notice that as a as a kid, but that's but that's definitely true. Anyway, um, about Zoom. all right, yeah. See, the thing is, I'm gonna lose or not lose, but y'all are gonna get mad. I don't. Liam, I don't know about you, I don't like Bugs Life all that much. Not me neither. Like, it's okay, but it's, but it's like just that. The whole liar, like, reveal thing kind of sucks in this movie. And like, I can't get invested in a bug war. I, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, I know what game I should never ask for to play. <laughs> um, actually, I've seen Monster University a couple times. Did you like it? It was actually pretty decent. Is it as good as Monsters, Inc., though? No, but I feel like the beginning portion is pretty cool, and the later half is really cool. And everyone says the biggest problem with the movie is the middle. Which, I mean, like... Does it drive? Oh, kinda. It's more of, like, that debate where, like... Or if you're that type of person who hates that, like, those, like, montages or, like, those weird challenges the characters have to do, where it's all about characterization of what they do with it. Right, yeah. If you don't like that type of thing, then you're not gonna like it. But I kinda like it, so... I'd say pretty decent, above Bugs Life and Onward, but is it above Luca? That's that's a question. I saw it once. I didn't think so, but that's just me. It, there's there's no debate on why Crabbles is. Let's just rave though. I mean, like, si- dude, Syndrome's plot twist still still gets me to this day. It's the thing is, I said like a big plot twist. Liam said though that like they did it perfectly though, mm-hmm. and it's true because like. If they had showed that scene of him tearing that, you know, picture down, at the, you know, very, very start, you would have known that Syndrome was the, like, villain. Yeah. But I think what makes it cool is that, like, Syndrome, well, talking about Syndrome firstly, is that Syndrome was, like, made to be a character really ignored because he was just a side thing that you were just, like, watching. Uh-huh. You really didn't pay attention to him the entire time in the very first portion of the movie. Right. And then when it comes back that he's the guy who's the main villain, you're like... That makes sense. And because, like, you're kind of sidelining him as well as Mr. Crabble. Uh-huh. So, like, everyone's sidelining him until he comes back. Right. Yeah. Plus, the fact that he was actually going to be a... Plus, the fact that he was really able... He was literally, like, 
capable of killing children and was like fully totally going for it. <laughs> it was like really, really like evil. And I I love I love it. I do love Edna. I love Frozone. <laughs> um and guys, I cannot lie, and Liam and I have you know talked about this, but can we just say how dark that chrono scene is? Like, when you're kids you just hear the music and you see like Mr. Incredible typing and then you see the terminated. Terminated. Right. But you don't know what it means. Not really. But then when you're a grown up. You know that. Oh gosh. <laughs> Syndrome's a mass murderer or he's a, he's ethically cleansing the entire world of superheroes in order to become a fake one in order to sell military weapons to the average man. Yeah. Which is like it's just crazy to me. And then, like, the music swells at the very, very end as he gets more and more closer. And then, and then, the and then, and then Elastic Girl's, like, getting closer and closer to pressing the button, and then you're just, like, waiting for that moment, it goes off, and then it goes off, and then everything just goes, boom! <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, alright. Now back to Toy Story 4. Now back down to Earth. So, here's the thing. Toy Story 4. Great. Okay. Great movie. I hate the ending. Yeah. I don't really like the ending either. But, it, like, the first 97 minutes are fine. The last five minutes, I think, are terrible. Not even from, like, a movie standpoint. It's not... It, it's, not that, it's not that the ending was bad. I just didn't like the way that it went. I kind of feel like the last, like, half of it was just trying to make you subvert every single expectation in the entire movie. What do you mean? Like, remember the, uh, doll? Yeah. And she was, like, trying to get, like, she was trying to get played with again? Yeah, and right. And she gets thrown away, like, the instant that she gets, they should get to the voice box. Right, yeah, and yeah, yeah. she, um, but then, like, later on, she gets a new girl. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was trying to sort expectations, then go so straight through his expectations, and then Woody, you think he's gonna leave, and then you feel like he's gonna stay, and then he guess actually does leave. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, like, the fact that, like, every single major character except Buzz, Woody... Bo Peep and like and everyone else not everyone else but like all like the uh, new characters everyone else in the series like Rex and all the characters from uh, Toy Story Slank, all got, Ham, all got yes. sidelined so freaking hard they 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 might each have like what three or four lines three lines I think Jesse had like two lines <laughs> We'll have to look back on the movie, but I really don't feel like watching it again. It's not bad, though. It's not... It's a really good movie. Yeah. And it's just that the ending just really doesn't work, and there's some aspects that just don't work for the movie. I, I have to put it below up. Yeah. But I think I'm going to put it into the... Into the low awesome. Red Panda Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Roman, no. No. I'm not even going to say anything. Turning Red. That's what it's called. Sorry. What? What? You think, you think it's trash? I haven't seen it. But then you, if you haven't seen it, why are you calling it trash? Fine. Put it in haven't seen. Maybe, I say call it maybe good. Wait, no. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Roman open new book, Marky. <laughs> we will come back and we will edit this later. <laughs> um... Finding Dory. Oh my Dory. god. Why are, they, why are they doing this to me? <laughs> now it's like... Oh gosh, I just look at the list and like, it's only like a five, four like actual movies that are good and every single other one is... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, actually, Lim and I have a disagreement about Brave, but we will get there. A disagreement about Brave? Yeah. We'll see about that. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so... Finding Dory was not worth waiting for. I'll say that much. Like Crabbles too. Yeah. But like, I think it's like the top of bad tier. You think so? Yeah, I feel like it's in that range where like it's a top of bad tier for me. You don't think it's a I terrible like, movie? I mean, like there's like some nice little things about the movie I like, like the fact that like every single new character introduced plus Dory had like a special thing wrong with them, but they're only but no one really brings attention to it. Or the fact that like the aquarium was like a really cool place to go to, after, like all the different areas in the first movie. And I. I do have to say, the scene of Dory talking to her, like, parents when she was, like, a little fish, it does kind of make me cry a little bit. And then, like, her whole, like, finding her parents again thing. Yeah. Ghost Dork. <laughs> um, when she finds them, 
as a you know grown up, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that shit made me cry. Uh-huh. Like, but we were also going through something at the time that we were watching that movie. So like, I might have been more, or I might have been a little less sentimental. But like, now if I were to watch it, but like then it just made me cry. Yeah. So so like, I think it's a good movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. No, not a good movie, but like. <laughs> The very, very... I think it's better than A Bug's Life. I mean, you think so? I already watched that than A Bug's Life, because at least it doesn't sting me. At least it doesn't stab me at the very end. Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Favorite. <laughs> Find out such a stupid name, man. It makes such a great movie. Is it above Toy Story 2? I think it's like... I think it's like the third best one that they made. So... What do you love about this movie? Alright, so firstly... Uh, the music's great. I mean, I love I love the fact that, like, TikTok somehow made, like, one of the songs in the movie, like, <laughs> super popular for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right. I love TikTok, but I also hate it with all my heart. <laughs> anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, Rod too. What can be said? It's a great movie. <laughs> the visuals? The visuals are great. I love the... Okay, firstly, I'm not really much of, a, like, a big eater, but, man, that food looks good all the time. <laughs> um, I, I love that scene... What was the fat rat's name? Fat rat's name? Yeah. I forget his name. The fat tall one? Uh, I don't know their names. I forget the cast of them easily. The gray rat's name is Remy. Yeah, Remy's easily. That um, because of uh, other reasons. <laughs> um, no, nah, but when... So, you so mean, like, the food testing team? They had, like, eaten trash uh-huh. their whole lives. And then Remy gives him, what, a grape and a some, grape like, and cheese. cheese. Yeah. And then you see the you see the visuals when he's, yeah, like, like, a pastel know. look. Right, yeah. yeah. It's really cool looking. Or, like, the entirety of, um... What's the guy's name? The guy who, like, the reviewer? Gaston, I think? No, not Gaston. No, that's the chef. Uh, that's, like, the... Like, that's, like, the, the, the reviewer... I don't know his name. Give me a second. But, like, the fact that he was, like... Ego. Ego. It's, it was Ego. Yeah, bro. That scene where he was moved? Yeah. Like... And, like, the ending speech he has? That was great. And then... So, he's not really the villain. He's just... Ego's the villain. You mean, like, Ego overall? His Ego is the villain, in a sense. Or Ego is the main thing that drives them. The little chef is is, the villain. is really like the villain. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I think but I think what makes Ratatouille super good is like the whole message of anyone can cook, which like you could say like anyone can cook, like obviously. So <laughs> yeah, but put, put your pet pants in the kitchen, watch it do some stuff. Well, I mean, like I, I'm just saying though, I'm sorry, but there are some people that can't cook. <laughs> like <laughs> Kitchen Emerson has shown us that. <laughs> but like on that though, like I just like the idea that like it shows that like anyone can do anything really put their mind to it and, like really like accept it right which was like how that was the main theme of the movie and with Remy and I and I feel like I feel like Gaston's okay but you're more so rooting for Remy really like well guess no guess, no Remy Remy you got the names wrong sorry Gaston is the fat chef that died. Sorry, right. Linguini is the guy. Linguini. That's, that's who someone called me once. Someone, like, said to me, you know, you look kind of like Linguini. I was just like, wait, really? <laughs> Linguini's okay, but, like, do you really feel for him? I feel more for Remy. Yeah. Oh, and, I'm, I'm sorry, before you, before you go on, that scene... <laughs> Where his, where you know, re, where you know, Remy's father shows him the 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 you know dead rats is actually kind of dark. <laughs> like they're dead rats, Roman. Put your head together. I know, but like they show like you know the lightning strike. Uh-huh. They you know zoom in on them being dead. It's like <laughs> these rats are dead. <laughs> these rats are dead. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's like a favorite tier. Soul is not. Why did I do that? I haven't seen it. So, I've seen it. It's just pretty decent. And now we is get... It, okay, is it high decent or low decent? Ah, it's above Monsters University, I would say. Okay. Now we get to ranting time because... No, wait. We have to make another tier. <laughs> okay. You're adding a row below? Yes. There's something below to be determines Liam I'll let you go first just let me put it there okay got it go alright Cars 2 let's get this out of the way <laughs> the greatest movie of 
of all time. I know, it's so great. <laughs> I love the fact that Mater said it's Matering time, and then the entire movie audience clapped, and we just sat there for two hours while he continually said it's Matering time on a cut, on a cut tape. It truly was the greatest movie I've ever seen. No seriousness! What the hell was that? Alright, like, so... I hear some debate about this movie. Honestly, the idea of making Carl a spy movie <laughs> isn't the worst idea in the world. It's how it's executed. It's how everything else is handled. The fact that act that two spies who are supposedly like world renowned, <laughs> not even the, like not even like the uh, purple car spy, who, Finn. Like, no, that no, the uh, other one. I forget her name. Oh. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I forget her name, but like how she like I understand her not really buying Nader like. Mater, but uh, but the fact that, like the blue one, the like I'm not even gonna try to remember names. Finn, like, yeah, Finn. The fact that like they, there's something that he played doesn't played by Alfred. Ugh. <laughs> the fact that he doesn't know that Mater is obviously not a spy because <laughs> he's himself in the airport scene. <laughs> also, the fact that this canonically main, makes that air, that canonically makes that planes and uh, cars are connected in the same universe, even though they've said that they're not. They are. They have to be, right? Yeah, they have to be at this point. Damn, Slate's is a terrible movie. So then, wait. But then, so then, this just kind of brings me up to, like, another point. Are planes, like... What are they... If cars are... If cars are the humans, then are planes the cars of the cars universe? Are they... Are they cargo? There's a car... Wait, are they... Wait, okay, hold up. So there's a... So, in the first Cars movie, the two, like, cheerleading cars are, like... Queen's fangirls, uh, they uh, flash their lights, which is supposed to symbolize flashing bu- 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 Uh-huh. But then there's a car in Cars 2 that has her eyes in them. <laughs> cars is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what is Cars? No, like, really, what is Cars? Like, what genius thought, oh yeah, let's make a, let's make a movie about Cars. And listen, before y'all say, what are y'all saying? Y'all like, you know, Toy Story. Shut up. Okay? <laughs> but like, at least Toy Story makes like a sound idea. Like, if the, did they kill the humans? <laughs> did the cars, or no, did humans turn into cars? Did they like, the nuclear like warhead go off in every single country <laughs> that led to humans becoming cars? Yeah, like, what happened? Well, it's more when, I mean, on that note, we actually on the actual Cars movie, the first one. Okay. Well, pretty bad. It's above the good dinosaur. I'm sorry, I hate, I hate lightning. I hate lightning. I hate lightning by kind of, like, the stupid stuff in the movie. I have, like, it's like an, uner- it's like an, ir- ironically, I like the movie, unironically, I don't really like it. <laughs> I like the line that he has. I'm in hillbilly hell <laughs> because it's like the only time I've ever heard cursing when I was a kid. That was the only movie that mom would, would let us watch that had like actual swearing. Mm-hmm. Um, but nah, like, like Cars is bad, but like, the, like you can't lie. This is the only movie that made us funny in. Yeah, is in like this movie because he's not like you know because he's not like the main character. Honestly, you could put it from like bad trash to like pretty decent i wouldn't even disagree with you really yeah so if like if you like want to put a little higher it's fine i'm gonna put it like in the low bad tier yeah i'll put above incredibles 2 i watched it again really yeah you watch cars over incredibles 2 yeah honestly i don't even hate that i don't even hate cars that much you're really ragging on this movie huh yeah all right we're We're gonna fight brave is awesome wait what yep what? Yep. What? Yep. What? You heard me. What? Yep. What? Yep. What? Uh huh. Fight me on this. Explain. The s- it's when have we ever seen a story of a destined princess who didn't want to be a princess? Ramen, I mean, you'd be quite surprised how go find on anything. Okay, listen to me. A a princess who had to realize that she was wrong, and then you get this like emotional moment. Where she just accepts that her mother's going to be a bear forever, and then she just says that, that she's sorry, and the and the power of love saves her mom, and and you know stops her from being a from you know being from you know being a bear. That scene's touching, is it not? The whole story's touching. I never rag on Kingdom Hearts again. <laughs> Firstly, <laughs> secondly. 
it's one scene and like okay but like on that note like it's like a it's like a pretty decent at worst like i play like right next to bug's life really if you want to be completely honest i don't think it's the worst thing in the world i just think it's kind of meh as a movie i don't like all the, i don't even like all the characters i think even uh i think even disney knew that because remember merida and uh off picks the internet. <laughs> I don't think anyone really liked okay. Brave. Okay, no one can no one can understand her. Yeah. On that note, she's pretty fun to play, play as in Disney Infinity, and I would really like to see a Brave world in Kingdom Hearts sometime. <gasps> Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3. Is it better than Toy Story? I think it's right next to Toy Story 2. Yeah? Not above it, but below it, just slightly. Okay. Actually, put it like, I think it's the weakest of the favorites. Put it like right... Put Pull Ratatouille. Okay. Let... Let... So, I gotta say, the Lasso Twist, mwah, that, that works well. And I do like that Toy Story 3 is like a prison escape movie with like toys. Yeah, which is really funny. And like the fact that, you know, Potato Head's a tortilla for half of the movie. But like, here's something that really makes me really think though. So Mr. Potato attached himself to a human being in some way, shape, or form. Could he control it? Maybe. But then, like, that makes you ask a question. How, what's the limit to him? Can he possess anything? He's he's the most powerful thing in the universe. Does he have the powers of darkness? <laughs> That's why I wasn't in Kingdom Hearts 3. So, what do you like about this movie, though? Uh, okay, on, lo- on like, a serious note? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Prisoner Escape's really fun. I like the whole... T- I like the whole, uh... I like the whole I like the whole daycare setup with the movie and how like it's executed. I, I like also the butterfly room. <laughs> yeah, I like the fact that the big baby's like creepy as like is super creepy because like I mean being honest, have you ever seen those big babies in the toy store? They their eyes stare at you. <laughs> I like the whole idea of like we of uh what do you have to deal with the fact that Andy's like leaving, so I right. to either stay with his friend or go with Andy, where he spent his entire life living, living living on his own with just him and <laughs> dust bunnies well he would have just been gathering dust in a box mm-hmm. or he or he could have stayed with his friends but but i do like the fact that like woody left it up to andy to choose if whether or not that he was gonna uh take him or not yeah well because i feel like at the you know very very start woody's like adamant that he's like staying with him right mm. but then he realizes that it has to be up to andy and then andy out of love for Woody, as his toy, wanted him to get played with, and so he gave him to the, and so he gave him to the little, so he, you know, gave him to the little, so, like, he gave him to the little girl, mm-hmm. and, Molly. yeah, and he, like, gave all of his toys to them, and that scene, where, like, where, like, y- where, like, you see him driving off, and then you see Woody say, so long, partner, I don't know why, but even as a grown-up, I still cry watching that scene. Yeah. Plus the whole uh, dump thing. Yeah. As, as contrived as the whole final thing is. It's, it, it does feel like, forced. It, kinda. It it does feel forced. That being I said, lie. it was pretty, it was pretty like, rad in the movie to pretty much show like what hell would look like for a toy. <laughs> yeah. And Lotso got what, what he actually deserved. Like. And, uh, and like... I'm going on the whole Sid thing. Roman like real Roman always loves the fact that like apparently people say that Sid is the trash man who picks up Lotso. So there's a reason for that because in the first Toy Story, Sid's wearing a Sid's wearing a skull shirt, right? The trash man is wearing that same shirt. Yeah. So people theorize that it was Sid right there, which makes me realize that like Lotso, a Lotso toy probably got brutally decapitized in uh in Sid's room. Also, here's the thing. Is Lotso compelling? He yeah. he's not he starts off compelling with like his ideas, but then you realize he's a, he's a, he's basically a tic- he's basically a dictator of the prison. But his, you know, backstory's sad though. It's like you kind of you kind of feel where he's like coming from. Mm-hmm. But he's not stinky Pete. Yeah. Like that being said, uh Definitely miles better than Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, Episode 3. What? <laughs> That's like the most deep cut reference I could ever make. Okay, Mothers The Last one, my favorite. Favorite. Alright. 
I actually have a really cool thing I really want to say about what I was saying. All right, go ahead. So, back when, like, people were talking about world building and stuff like that, one of the things I, like, always loved about Monsters, Inc. is the fact that, like, it just naturally shows what the world is like for them. Right. Without any, without any like, explanation of what at all. You don't have to explain, like, in this world, monsters use this energy from children's screams. Right, yeah. They just, like, naturally show what the world's like in the first couple, in the first, like, uh, what, 20, 25-ish minutes? And also, you kind of see that, like, not all of the monsters are really bad. No, 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 no. Besides, literally, just, uh, what's his name? Uh, Water Noose? Water Noose, well, no. Water Noose is, like, a, the, I could talk about Water Noose for a second. <laughs> what's the, uh, lizard one? I forget his name. Remy. Yeah, right. Rem, besides Remy, they're not even they're not evil. They're just doing their job, right? And like even they don't actively hate kids. No. That being said, Remy like actively like was like harassing that little girl the entire for his entire life. So there's that <laughs> for you. Also, okay. So Water News' whole plot twist is really interesting because like he's doing it because of capitalistic needs of the world. Because nowadays, because everything runs on the screen energy, right? He just has to go for these drastic measures in order to achieve that goal. Right. So it's really fucked up, but at the same time... You kind of you don't feel for him. You don't really feel for him. He's just trying to satisfy the needs. So, like, in a weird comic sort of way, it's like a take on capitalism. Sort of, yeah. Sort of. I didn't think that, like, Monsters, Inc. would, you know, tackle that, but, like... Yeah, but I know Mike and Sully are great. I love them. It's just me and Roman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But who... Okay, but... I'm Mike, you're Sully. Yeah, okay. It's fair. Yeah. Nah, but... Okay, the last thing. Do you like Boo? Boo's great. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> I love the fact that she constantly... I love the fact that, um... I love the fact she worked that... I love the fact that, like, she's just a little girl and she apparently had that, uh, toy ball the entire time. And yeah. And the entire monster, like, society's afraid of her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stupid play on, like, the whole idea. Oh. Which is, like, super funny. So, there's some that we haven't talked much. Plus, the humor in the movie is, like, amazing. I love every single scene. Monsters, Inc. is really, really funny. Uh-huh. But... And, like, has... And, like, even... Okay, can I go another thing? Yeah, sure. I've been super impressed about one thing. That came, that movie came out, like, early 2000s. Did it, it came come out before Toy Story 1? It came out afterward. Oh. Oh, it was okay. their... I think it was, like, their, like, third movie. No. It was their fourth. Right. It was their fourth movie. And right. honestly... It does look good. It's insane how good the movie looks, even to this day. It still looks amazing. I, like... I rewatch it from time to time. It looks amazing. Yeah. And just something that, like, I don't know if Liam picked up or not, but the Pixar ball is in every Pixar movie except for the good dinosaur. Makes you really realize how bad a movie is. <laughs> <laughs> so I think... Um, well, actually, on that note, I think something interesting is that people make a made a whole bunch of theories on, like, where everything's connected in the Pixar universe. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. They say that, like, people say that Ratatouille and Up in the same universe because of Doug in that one scene. I would buy that. And apparently people say that Monsters, Inc. and Brave are somehow connected due to Sully being in one of the uh, mannequins that the, that the witch made. Yeah. So there's a lot of theories out there, like, how this, everything's connected. I would believe that, like, almost all of them, except maybe, like, Soul and Kent, Soul, Coco, and probably Onward, all of them are probably connected in some way, shape, or form. Right. And Wally, obviously, because that's the far future. I say Wally's, like, the very far future of the uh, world. That being said, my biggest takeaway is this Kingdom Hearts 4, have a Wally world, or get the fuck out. <laughs> that, and I just have to say, Pixar, y'all kind of lost. Y'all lost the sauce a, a little bit. Actually, don't get out. It's fine. You can you can choose whatever world you want, but please have a Wally world. Please, I'm begging you, Disney but, slash Square Enix. But I just have to say, Pixar's made some really good movies. Yeah. And so, and and most of these were like our childhood. Mm -hmm. So and that's why I'm super glad that all these were nominated for the best anime feature for our kids because <laughs> kids watch these movies constantly. Day after day after, after day after day. Actually, I think Mom might have gotten tired of it because we watched, like, so much Toy Story. Mm -hmm. And we watched and so... Rebels. Yeah, yeah. And well, so much Wall-E and so much, uh... <laughs> Cards mm -hmm. too. We actually... As a kid, I actually rewatched that movie come to time. Yeah, but, like, I'm sure Mom got, like, really, really tired of it, though. Because, like, we watched these movies so much. But, yeah, thank you for... Thank you for listening and, you know, watching us ramble. 
and we'll be back in a second for our next content. Yep.